Keeping your sewing machine clean and in good condition is absolutely the number one most important thing you can do to increase its longevity. Um, this particular model is super duper popular. Um, it's a great starter model. It's a great over-the-counter available machine um, that's at a really affordable price. So lots and lots of people have a machine that's like this. Um, this does not have a bobbin case. It doesn't have a front-loading one. And this is a top-loading model. And so the way we would maintain this machine is slightly different from the way you'd maintain a, a machine that has a bobbin case. Um, but here it's pretty simple to look and see that we begin in the same way. Um, taking a piece of clean soft muslin, fold it over, you can tuck it between that tension mechanism and move it around a bit to sort of loosen up anything that happens to be in there. You'll actually see bits fall out below it as you do that. Um, or you might see a little bit of lint on the um, muslin itself as it comes out between those tension plates. And the idea here is just to loosen things up. Again, you can use a little bit of compressed air from back to front. If you think there might be something in there that needs to be loosened up and brought forward. And then once you've got the tension mechanism clear, because again, we're really, really cleaning out and um, what is inside any part of the path that the thread is taking. Tension mechanism is the biggest and first place that the thread encounters. From there, we're going to move down to the actual bobbin assembly, which is in the drop-in case. Cleaning the bobbin assembly for a machine that has a drop-in bobbin, again, is a little bit different from doing one that has a bobbin case. For one thing, you don't have to clean out a bobbin case because it doesn't have one. And um, here I've already removed my presser fit and I'm going to remove my needle next. And this particular machine belongs to my oldest child, which means I can pretty much guarantee that it has never, ever, ever been cleaned and maybe that the needle has never been replaced. So we'll take out that needle there. Remember that all the screws and parts are going to be factory tight if you've never Ever cleaned your machine before and so it might take a little bit more effort to get them um, to get them to come apart so take off my bobbin cover remove my bobbin and then I'm going to remove my metal throat plate back here and um, you should have gotten when you got your machine brand new a church key um, just a little sort of roundy thingy that goes into these screws um, I've already loosened these a little bit to make them easier to get out, so yours might be much, much more difficult to unscrew, but just stick with it and use the right tool. Depending on who your manufacturer is, you may or may not have gotten a little tiny church key. You may have gotten a giant screwdriver that doesn't seem to be the right tool for the job, which I find a little frustrating, um, but you just have to keep working. This actually is not a church key. It's a washer. Um, but I thought that it would be the best tool for getting it off, and it turns out it is. So, I'm going to take out my throat plate here and remove that from the machine to expose these innards, at which point you can unpop this little plastic piece and remove that as well. Ah! There we go. Whew. Didn't think that was going to come out. And then you can see everything that's on the inside there of your machine. You can see um, where that shuttle hook is, that hook race is, and then you can see the little bits of dirt. There's a tiny little brush here. This entire assembly, where the bobbin fits in, comes out. He's got a little brush on top of him that catches a lot of that lint. See that? As it comes out of the machine and under those feed dogs. And again, if your machine is new, you've got a little tiny brush with a pick on it, and you can use that pick to get in between those feed dogs and loosen up any lint and then brush it away to get it out of your machine. You'll see little bits and pieces coming off. This is actually fairly clean because, again, it's my child, so it is virtually new. So it's not gonna need a lot of attention. And then, because all machines are slightly different, you do wanna check the manufacturer's instructions and see if they recommend oil on it. If your manufacturer does, Rather than sticking the little bob, the whole bottle of oil down in your machine, I recommend putting just a drop on a piece of muslin like that, and then rubbing just the metal parts. We really don't want to rub those plastic parts too much. Just clean it around a bit on the inside there. Same thing here, just the metal parts on the interior and keep those nice and clean. Some machines, if you read their uh, manual closely, will tell you don't use any oil at all. Um, I had a Viking that was like that. And so you do want to make sure that you check for your particular model, does mine require uh, any oiling? So, 
So this is all nice and clean. And um, with your drop-in bobbin, it's a fairly simple uh, matter to clean it up. If you feel like you've got some bits and pieces stuck, you can use the little um, straw attachment on your compressed air to get in there and shoot, particularly because all of this under here is open and that's where a bunch of gook can kind of accumulate. So you can sort of get all those places that you can't see very clearly. Um, be careful with the compressor. Don't aim it at any one piece too much because it does get super cold and if the metal gets super cold, it's gonna weaken the structure of the metal and actually shorten the lifespan instead of improve it. Once all of this is done, you can start reassembling and everything goes back together the way it was before. Pop it all back in. Uh, pop in our throat plate here. He's got a little tongue that goes underneath there. And then our plastic piece it's on top and should all just pop in neat as you please. And then we're going to put our screws back where they were, nice and snug. Remember that when these first came out, they were crazy factory tight. And so if you have never done a cleaning before or looked underneath that throat plate, or if you thought you were never supposed to do that and you couldn't figure out why those screws were there in the first place, um, you're going to want to make them nice and snug again because that's how the manufacturer had them, assuming I can, there we go, ever get it to go in. And so I'm just gonna finger tighten to start with because these are sort of awkward to get to. And then I'll tighten it up the rest of the way. Like that, nice and snug. And then I'll put my other screw in, in the other screw hole here. Again, nice and snug, just the way it was when I got the machine. Uh, this is a great chance to replace your needle, which you really should be replacing after every major project. And you know, if you make a lot of uh, bibs or little things like that, you can probably get away with making a bunch before you change your needle. Um, you don't have to have a new needle for every single bib. Um, but sometimes even a brand new needle won't perform very well for you. So do change your needle frequently. I mean, for the cost of 60 cents, you can have so much more satisfaction and so many better results with your sewing. Put the bottom back in cover plate back on, brand new needle, add my presser foot, and I am ready to sew.